As the psychedelic renaissance continues to blossom and unfold, the paradigm is shifting, and more and more people are considering taking their first trip. Many future travelers are weary, or worse, scared, and there are numerous trip sitters and shamans who will hold their hand or guide them through their first journey. But I found a woman who approaches things very differently, and she's helping people every day find their inner fortitude to take their journey solo. She's filling a niche in the community, which is full of people who are busy or broke or both. She helps them achieve something akin to integration, but she claims it's deeper and calls it psilocynthesis. So, all right, fellow travelers, sit back, fasten your seatbelts, because we're about to take off with Jennifer Isom of Inner Edge Travel Agency. You're listening to the Myco Geeky Podcast. A podcast that inspires people to grow mushrooms at home to improve their mental, emotional, and physical health. Most people call him geeky, and he is a passionate mushroom cultivator, advocate, and educator. Every week, he sits down with fellow cultivators, mushroom educators, scientists, and therapists to discuss the various ways people can approach mushroom cultivation and how mushrooms can be used to improve their lives. All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Mike O'Geeky Podcast, the podcast that goes deep so you can level up your at-home mushroom cultivation game. I'm your host, Mike O'Geeky, and we have a nice show tonight. I'm excited. A uh, little something different, a little softer side of things, uh, not, not so cut and dry. Uh, as cultivation can be, we're going to talk about integration tonight. Although, uh, my guest, she calls it a little something different. Uh, she calls it Scylla synthesis. So anyway, we're going to talk to Jennifer Isom, uh, of the inner edge travel agency, but first, you know, let's go ahead. And, uh, I, I got a lot of people to thank, um, for, for where I'm at and what I'm doing. Uh, I really appreciate my Patreon supporters. You guys are amazing. Um, I, I really cannot do this with, without you guys. So thank you. Uh, if you guys have not considered supporting me on Patreon, I'm only here every week grinding it out, but that's cool. That's cool. If you're broke, don't do it. If you got a couple bucks and you want to support my efforts, I would really appreciate it. All you got to do go to patreon.com backslash Mike geeky, or, you know, what? I keep saying backslash. Apparently that's a forward slash my bad. Um, Real easy. If you're on an app, you're going to have to just go into a browser. Just type in the words uh, Patreon, Michael Geeky in, in, in a Google search and it'll pop right up. You can't search within uh, the app, apparently, because it's uh, above 18. They don't want little kitties, you know, watching the Michael Geeky podcast and, and, and other nefarious things that, that go on there. So anyway, uh, I'd really, really appreciate it if you guys would consider supporting me. Uh, if you can support me for a month, great. If you can support me for a year, great. If you can support me as long as I'm doing this, great. Whatever you're able to do, I'd appreciate it. I'm doing whatever I can do for this community. I, I, I know as time goes on and I, I, I build uh, credibility and faith within the community, uh, I'll see more and more people on the Patreon. So it's all good. We're, we're doing it. We're evolving. We're, we're making it happen. I'm a little over a year in and I don't know about you, but I've been having a good time. I'm learning a lot. I hope you guys are too. Uh, also want to hit that mission statement. I am here to educate and inspire mushroom cultivators and enthusiasts on the art and science of mushroom cultivation while also delving into the medicinal, therapeutic, and societal aspects of mushrooms, including discussions on integration therapy, spirituality, and the decriminalization movement. That's what we're doing. We're, we're, we're trying to deepen and broaden our understanding as cultivators at home, but we also got to talk about the soft side. We got to talk about integration. We got to talk about decriminalization. We got to, you know, we're a part of this community. We got to figure out how to navigate all this stuff. So we're, so we're doing that. So tonight, you know, we've, we've had quite a bit of cultivation talk recently. Uh, we got the Facebook group, group going. That's going well. A little learning curve there. Um, for those of you in the group, I have high expectations. Um, there are so many Facebook groups where you can post a picture of your fruit. It takes 20 seconds. You're like, I just want a quick little dopamine hit. I'm going to post a pic. I'm going to get some likes. I am not trying to create a Facebook group that behaves the way Facebook wants it to behave. 
If nobody does a post for three days, I could care less. If nobody has a post for three weeks, I could care less. I want high quality posts. I want posts that teach us all something. I want posts that generate discussions uh, that we have not been having out loud. These are the kind of things I'm looking for. Advanced cultivation concerns. The basics, what grain should I run? That is not, uh, there are so many other Facebook groups for that. Uh, and if you've watched even a third of my episodes, you, you would know that that question's a, a little ridiculous anyway. So anyway, I'm just trying to put it out there. The Facebook group is an advanced group for advanced or very serious cultivators. If you join and you're not that yet, or you're not sure if you're going to be that, that's cool, but just hang out relax see what's going on it's all good i do not feel compelled to make a post every day you should not either i want this to be a really targeted high quality level of content in this group so uh that's what i'm going for if that's what you're looking for in a facebook group and you grow mushrooms then come on over check it out if you are brand brand new man check out my discord server we can teach you how to grow mushrooms watch more of the Michael geeky podcast Watch, uh, you know, Ed Grand has got some phenomenal videos on how to uh, how to breed mushrooms. If if you think the crossing game looks fun and you want to make your own mushrooms, man, it's not that hard. Just go watch some of his his, his uh, content. Um, so anyway, moving on. Facebook group is, is starting, you know, we're working out the kinks. We're moving forward. Uh, the mutant grow along is in full swing. Everybody's knocking up their grain. Everybody's expanding their LC, whatever they're doing, but we're moving forward. We're probably a week or two away from people starting to um, have fully colonized grain spawn that they will spawn to bulk on. And then the real journey begins, guys. So um, I look forward to that. I think we have well over 100 people participating in that. So thank you for that. Um, and uh, my buddy Mickey Mutants, he definitely thanks you. Um, I hope everybody has the most bang and flushes. I cannot wait to see what everybody does. I also hope that we learn some things. Um, I, I hope that everybody who participates becomes a better grower as a result and uh, gets to experience some, some new cultigen. So should be a good time. All right, guys. So uh, tonight we're going to talk to Jennifer Isom of Inner Edge Travel Agency. Uh, she was recommended to me uh, through uh, the, the good old Michael Mamas. They are always good for, for some recommendations um, on, uh, integration work particularly. Um, so I went and, uh, reached out to her and talked. We, we chit chatted the other day. It was a phenomenal talk. I was pretty excited. Uh, definitely a unique perspective on some of this work. Um, so I think we should just get into it. Let's get to know her. All right. Welcome to the show. Jennifer Isom. What's up? Good morning. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. So for, for the viewers, just so you know, Jennifer, let the cat out of the bag. We're recording bright and early this morning. Oh. She is, she's ex military. So even though she's on Pacific time, I, I think she got up before I did today. So <laughs> yes, <laughs> she is, uh, the early bird gets the worm. That's what they say. Absolutely. Anyway. So you're over, uh, you're on the West coast. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm in the middle coast and, uh, we're, we're just sitting here hanging out, talking about, uh, kind of your journey and what what you're doing in the space. Now, I got to tell everybody, um, the Michael Mamas, Mama S, Mama D, uh, they're always good for some, hey, you know who you should talk to. Um, <laughs> yeah. it, it actually shocks me. With almost 9,000 subscribers, um, every video is getting at least a few thousand views in the first week. It actually surprises me how few people message me and go, hey, Geeky, you really should go talk to this person. That's because Mama D and Mama S are on the grind. So they they don't they don't sleep. They uh, they have a kind heart. They're in this community for the right reasons. They don't see everybody else as peer competition. <clears throat> they want to celebrate people who are doing great work. You know what I mean? So anyway, so we've had a few people on. And uh, so far, they've all seemed to be focused on integration. Mm -hmm. Now, Jennifer's uh, adjacent to the integration. She's yeah. she's facilitating some self-integration and all that kind of stuff. So we're, we're going to really sit down and get to know her today and uh, find out what she's all about and what she's doing. I can tell you right now, I think she's doing something pretty cool. I think it's going to appeal to a lot of people, and we're going to get into it. 
All right. So how about we do this? I, we okay. do this with everybody. We want your first mushroom memory. Like what is the first time <laughs> that, that mushrooms hit your radar and you were like, oh, I better go check these out. Yeah. Um, so I was in high school, 16, and I was going um, through the McDonald's drive through with a girlfriend of mine, Simeon. And we decided we were going to crumple everything up and put it in a McFlurry and or a Sunday, rather a McDonald's Sunday. And I remembered not wanting to taste the flavor because I had been told, put it in something cold, put a lot of flavor in it. So I asked mm -hmm. for extra caramel on the bottom and the top. And um, I think we ended up in a park. I think there were some, well, this was in Denver. So um, I feel like the museums were involved somehow, I'll be honest. I remember the prep more than I, think I remember the journey. But since then, um, of course, I was in the military for quite some time. So we didn't get reintroduced until 2017. Okay. So it was a long time from 1980 <clears throat> and some change until now. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So I, that seems to be a reoccurring theme. I think a lot of people, when I ask them that question, and I love asking that question just because, hold on, I'm adjusting something here. No problem. I love asking that question because I think a lot of people's first experience with psychedelics is framed in their youth mm -hmm. it's purely recreational and uh often involves other things beyond mcflurries and mcdonald's sundays <laughs> yes um, usually involves some other substances as well and i think uh or in my case we never got enough like i i was always teasing around a legitimate trip but we had fun every time we did it we were laughing and, and it was a good time but it was never a transformational experience no and so that ends up being that early experience with that. And like you're just saying, so cool, you did that and you moved yeah. on and you lived a life. And then it's not till 2017, you come back into this. Yeah. So what brought you? Son. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's hear that story. Tell me how in 2017 you got reintroduced to, to mushrooms. Yeah. Yeah. So um, after I retired from the military, I was in the Air Force for 23 years and I really did love it. And it was difficult when I got out. It was, there's not a lot of organization in this outside world. Everything just seemed to be free floating and it was a difficult transition. And um, my first vice that I had to overcome was I brought uh, a drinking issue with me from the military. It was one of those things packed into my baggage. And uh, it was really, really hard after retirement. I kind of had to, woo, I drank a lot, you know, the whole bottle of Crown a day, sneaking out of the house so you can, or sneaking your empty bottles out of the house so you can go buy more bottles after going through a drive through for breakfast, of course, because, you know, you have to cover up the crumpling sound or Anyway, all of those little things that come with it. And so um, I had been out for a little bit, you know, maybe three or four months. And that's when in Denver, anyway, uh, recreational marijuana was recreationally available. Or uh, so I think it was medicinal at first. But anyway, I was able to, to get some. And that within, I'd say within 90 days, it just turned around my drinking habits um, yes, I was leaning quite heavily now into marijuana, but it felt like a safer space. Um, I felt like I was able to think a little bit better. And, um, so that took me on, on kind of helped me get out of my funk and cleared the cobwebs enough for me to go. I think I want to start a business. I want to create a retreat for veterans with PTSD. And so probably starting in 2013, I just started drafting out what I wanted to do, what I wanted it to look like. Um, 
really having no idea how much work I needed to do on myself before I, but that's okay. You know, our ego makes us think we can do anything. And so sometimes we hop out there and give it a try. And so in 2016, in April of 2016, I quit my job at um, OSHA and put what I could in a 10 by 10 storage unit, packed up my two dogs in my little Mazda 3, pulling a little trailer. And I started to go around the US. Um, the thought was I was going to be doing my gap analysis for my own retreat. So I was going to visit all of these other places, find out what they're doing well, find out what they're not doing very well at all, and then put together my own plan. So um, I started out in Colorado, went down to Texas, hit up all the way over to the East Coast, having multiple little, uh, multiple mini breakdowns along the way. You know, the whole, oh my God, what am I doing? I don't have a house. How am I going to eat? How? I mean, just going through it, just going right. through my demons and everything along the way. I did hit the East Coast and uh, the reality of my financial situation hit me because I couldn't get through the toll booth with the, because I had eight wheels and all this stuff. So I had to pull over. And again, it was Simeon to save the day. And she said, hey, didn't you say you created your own agenda so that you could pivot at any time you wanted to? Which was another smile. Oh, yeah, I did, didn't I? So I headed back over to the West Coast side of things. Well, um, so so hold on before you go on. <clears throat> I think that's important to talk about because a lot of people in this space are trying stuff out there. There a lot of people in the space are in transformative moments of their lives. And, and I'm using that phrase very neutrally. Their lives yeah. are transforming sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse, sometimes change, but no, you know, net gain or loss. Yeah. And I think that is a really cool and important point to make, which is you can try something and figure out at some point you got to be willing to go is this working or is this not working That's did right. i think this through all the way did i not whatever that life lesson right there could save people you know you don't just got to keep don't going down that road just because mm -hmm. literally in your case <laughs> literally not even metaphorically right yeah. you can go well this i was doing for me and it's now not serving me anymore that's so right let's go you know, back yes i like that allowing ourselves those points in time where we already know we're going to do an assessment in 90 yeah. days i'm going to assess where i'm at um i didn't learn that till later but it was a pivotal moment in my journey to kind of go oh my gosh and i tell you once my nose was pointed west again everything changed, you know, and that was one of the things about my business is shift happens. You absolutely yeah. could be plugging along with one particular perspective and the tiniest little thing changes your perspective. Nothing changed, nothing at all. I was still on the road. I was still broke. I still, but something changed and I was all smiles again. Let's turn up the radio and Hey demons, we're going back West, you know, but everything just felt better. And so yeah, things lined up, right? Like yeah, things yeah. were making more sense. They lined up, they were changed. resonating. Yep. Nothing. Yeah. The only thing that changed was my perspective yep. and it was exactly. my empowerment. So, um, I did, I head back over to the West coast. I got again, um, another tiny mini meltdown in, in, uh, Washington state. Basically I ended up in Vegas. Okay. At this time, my son, and you know, when you come off the road, you don't just come off the road. You're still a little wide eyed and freaky, you know, like you're still, I want the bedroom closest to the front door of the house, because if I need to leave, um, I would wash dishes and I would never leave the faucet on. They would just trickle this water out, yeah. you know, and it's like, oh yeah, I can turn the water on. So there's a certain amount of decompressing you have to do. At this point, I'd been on the road almost five months, 13,000 miles, living out of the car with my two dogs. So I feel I was a little wild-eyed. But it was around this time he was telling me he started listening to Terrence McKenna. And oh, this is, now this is your son you're talking about. 
Yes. Okay. My sweet, wonderful Dakota. I'll brag on him a lot, so I'll have to pump my brakes. But it's just at a pit when I really needed to not talk, to not explain. My son was there. You know, he didn't. He didn't ask me for rent. He didn't nothing. He just let me be myself. Um. So anyway, I don't want to start tearing up about that kid. But anyway, he was telling me what he was getting into, and. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. What, son? You're wanting to do what? You know, child of the 60s here. So Generation X, while I'm open to that stuff, now my son's wanting to grow it. That's a little different. And then uh, he told me about the uh, progress it had, um, the research and the progress with veterans with PTSD, how it was helping them. So I went down the rabbit hole and all of a sudden I was hooked. I, I was, yes, son, do this, do this. So he's doing the Reddit thing, learning how. I'm just kind of hanging on his coattails, peeking over his shoulder. Um, and he taught himself. He did everything from scratch and, and learned it all. And then he saw the work I was doing because my side is more the soft sciences. You know, I'm the coach. I believe in you. I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to help you believe in yourself because everything without even recognizing it. When I went on the road in 2016, it was building my voice, my story, my, my me to be able to help people later on. I just didn't know it. So anyway, I'm over here helping folks. He's growing, I'm helping, and together we realized we, we were making a really good team. You know, he was able to help me help other people through my um, coaching, and those people had a reliable person to help them continue on their journey. But I said, son, and we've been doing this now four or five years, but okay. then I said, hey, listen, Thinking about this in a smart way, should you ever take the product away, whatever I have left, is that a viable business? Is my information viable? Is what I have to share viable? Is my, my you know, um, um, I don't, there's a couple words I don't want to use, like trip sitting, coach, uh, guiding. It isn't that. It's I, every step of the way, and maybe it's the military background, but I need to empower people. I can't, Yo, I, I don't want you to rely on me. Cause it's I'm almost person. like training. Yeah. You're, you're, you are training a person. Let's go to basic. Yes. Let's you are, you are basic. training a person yeah. I like that. Because yeah. I think for a lot of us, the product is out there, but how do we shape that into something that actually helps us move forward? Right. You know, we have all our little yay and happy and sad and all how do we rein in those tentacles a little bit and go okay let's start with a hug let's get everything in close and then let's move through this in a little bit more of a um worthwhile manner that you don't need me for you know i don't i think that's one of my concerns out there right now in the industry is everybody is kind of you need me whether it's the labels they use um, I'm a wellness center. I'm a shaman. I'm a guide. I'm everything about that says you need me. That is and so with a travel agency, with my travel agency, I help you book your agenda. I help you design your travels, but yes. I do not go on that trip with you. You right. pick your dates of travel. I just help you make sure. Did you pack everything you need to? And then right. once you come back now, how, how do I help you unpack all that emotional baggage? Right. Because that's the star of the show. Everything that we do after this journey is really the star of the show. It isn't the journey. It isn't the trip. It isn't, that just isn't it. It's the gateway. Yeah. And I want to make that more, um, more of a joyful experience for people. Right. I think there's enough folks out there that are taking care of the serious stuff, the lab coats, the check. Let me get my checklist out and right. let me watch you. I, okay. There's plenty of people that are doing that. It's needed. I think there are folks that will respond to that better. They're just too nervous. Yeah. But in my heart, if I talk to you straight up and down to me, 100% consent is when you do not feel you need to share responsibility with a sitter. You don't need to share that responsibility with a guide. 
I have been prepared to do this journey by myself. Now, I think it's Well, hold on, hold on. Let's that's 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 a big statement. So let's unpack that statement a little bit. So And I do have a PS on that because I, I don't want trip sitters or I, guides. I today. love well, no, so don't don't you worry, Geeky's gonna take care of you. So <laughs> here's the thing. I my perspective is like you just said, there are people that are going to fly from Boston, Massachusetts to Eugene, Oregon. They're going to happily pay the four grand to have their six hour clinically modulated trip uh, with, you know, with the same feather that sits at the, the bedside stand of, of that wellness center and the same tunes that everybody gets and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. However, that plays out. And like you said, there are some people who need that. That will be what it takes for them to make that leap. That's right. And then there are other people who go, no, I want to go to the Amazon jungle. I want to, you know, sleep in tents. I want this rustic, shamanistic, you know, adventure. But then, practically speaking, I can tell you what my life looks like. I don't have time for anything. I do not have time to go to the Amazon, maybe. I don't have time to go to Eugene. Um, so all, all my stuff's happened DIY. I'm DIYing it. Most people listen to this podcast are DIYing it. That's right. So that is a niche that is being neglected. And right. basically most people are just, you know, they go, cool. Wow. Let's see. Let's see what's up. We're doing it. I can't tell you how many people message me. Okay, I, I use that phrase a lot, but there have been a, a few people who have messaged me saying, wow, geeky, man, like, you know, I've been a psychonaut for 20 years, but man, I watched your episode on integration and I'm like, I've not done any of that. Yeah. I've always viewed it as the 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 gold is in the trip That's and right. and then there's like an afterglow and all that stuff, but then there's a time when I feel called to go back to it again. But they're they're like i've completely missed the integration aspect of it i've missed uh you know a more thoughtful approach to it yeah yeah so i love that because you are filling or you are responding to a need in the community that i mean up until talking to you i don't think too many people have ever told me anything other than i trips it yeah. Or, uh, or I'm specifically an integration coach. I, you know, you pay me by the hour. We talk through your, your, this, that, and the other thing yeah. you are really talking about teaching people how to be their own integration coach. You're like the Maria Montessori of, <laughs> of, uh, of, of psychedelic journeys. So I like that. That's cool. Well, I just really think that um, there really are. There's too many things out there that make us feel like we need that. And we're not going to be able to do this if we don't have that. Yep. And I, you know, especially if we're talking about the empowerment piece, it isn't hard to get people to accept your hand when you're offering help. It's difficult to get them to let go. And so that way, uh, if you yes. start from the very beginning with, let's look at your empowerment. I have a lot of clients that will say, Jen, I want to do this. However, you tell me to do it. And I'm like, nope, I, I, I apologize. I do not want that responsibility. I'm going to tell you the best way to do it based on some factual information here, because right. this is the part where the adulting comes in. You have to be your own adult in here. So I'm going to give you the things to take a look at and take into consideration. You're the one who has to pick from the shelf which one you're going to do because that's expectation, it's accountability, it's responsibility, it's adulting. But there are plenty of people I think that want to do that, take that, but they don't know, okay, so what, yeah, I don't just pop it in my mouth and let's go, 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 zoom, zoom, zoom. And I'm like, think about it. If you spent all this money $3,000, $6,000 to go to Costa Rica to do a celebration of self. Wouldn't you be preparing a little bit beforehand? Or do you just go about your life and you wake up on Saturday and go, oh, let me throw some shit in the bag and you hit the plane and you go. There are certain things that you're thinking about mentally that just 
going through in your own head. So if you're going to create a celebration of self for only one tenth of that cost in your own home, why wouldn't you still go through those same steps though? The same, same steps right. of saying, this is about me. This is making sure, or let's say it's those of us, we've done it before. I want to design something different this time. I don't want to just pop them in on a pizza or this way. Let me see what she has to say. Let's see if I can't design, design something that's a little more elevated. Because when you start to know how you can design it, then I feel you can more shift those experiences. I know there's a lot of people that talk about um, this one gives you more visuals. This one gives you more this. This one gives you more that. And I just want to say, let's challenge ourselves with creating the same space each time. Accountable for, mm -hmm. is my house clean? Did I account for my mind space, my life space, and my health space? Am I celebrating myself? Am I kicking everybody out? To me, that's the big one. Right. Everyone keeps trying a journey as if it were a social thing, or I'm just going to journey in my room. Oh my gosh, daytime tripping, nobody in the house, just you and your skivvies and your sunglasses. It is the most beautiful experience. Why would I want to go to Costa Rica when I can just kick everybody out of this space and, you know? I mean, so you just, you, you make a good point, which is right in the, the name of your, your inner edge travel agency, obviously, uh, this is a play on taking a trip. So you're right. I mean, why go to Costa Rica to then leave Costa Rica on your journey? <laughs> now, exactly. now, I know I will, my counterpoint to that will be, but there is something there, right? It, the That's same true. way that cleaning your house matters. For people that are drawn to nature, I'm definitely drawn to nature. So, mm -hmm. so all these places, you know, hold a, a level of intrigue, but at the end of the day, and I think we talked about this yesterday, um, man, it's pretty hard for most people. I mean, some people maybe have some domestic issues to contend with, uh, in their lives, but the average person feels extremely safe and extremely grounded in their home. That's right. And as, and if this is a new thing for you, or you're looking to get something different out of trip, out of I'm having safe. a trip, yep. this, this might be, we the always way to talk go. about a safe space, but we don't talk about how, and I know right off the bat, there's a lot of folks who will say, I can't, I can't, I can't clear everybody out of my house for an eight hour period of time. And I said, you'd be surprised at how many people say that, but then they bring it up to their family because that is part of your your life space responsibility. Does everyone in your life space know that I'm about to go on a journey? You would be amazed at how many people offer what? Absolutely, I'll grab the, we'll go to the zoo for the day. We'll do this for, you really only need about right. seven or eight hours. Right. You know, you just need it in that space where you're really cruising, you know, you're just yeah. at altitude. Um, but the thing is, is there's so many subtle things about our social cues that if there's anyone, even someone in the basement, there's still a part of you that stays a little bit on alert because you could turn the corner at any minute and that person is no longer in the basement. They're up here. So any, any energy, energy yeah. coming into contact, no matter how kind or how wonderful, it's just a nudge in that person's journey. So all right. So let, I got to ask you something. I got to ask you something. Yeah. So this is, you're saying all this from very much a place of authority. So I want to hear from you. And, and I believe you're saying it so convincingly, I believe it. And I've had a, a bit of experience that suggests the, that at least this is worth looking at. This is significant, right? The uh, trip with your friends goes a whole lot different than a trip with, with nobody but yourself. And I, you got me sitting here thinking of all the bad trip stories I've heard and how They've predominantly they're always with other people and they're yeah. always in maybe a new place. Yep. And so I, that's I really fascinating. believe it's because when you're in those spaces, subconsciously, you are trying to maintain all those social cues you learned your whole life. Somebody is speaking to you, but their face is it, but you're still trying to make sense of the words. 
and at the same time put together the words to reply back. And when you can't do right. that, it causes anxiety. Yeah. It causes us to want to crawl in a hole. And then other people might be journeying at a different pace. They think it's funny. So they start to laugh and giggle, but our energies are different. We're in different spaces. So to me, there's that museum dose, which is quite fine. But once you start talking about doing a lot, I just really think that that's that celebration of self amount. That's where I need to be alone. I to really have the best time to let myself really go. You know, maybe I have a phase where I got to lay down, but guarantee you, I get up every single time, put my sunglasses on, put my seventies music on, and I'm just having this best time in my, no one's coming. Doors are locked. Dogs are with me. My, my out, my inner circle has been notified. We have code words in case something's going wrong and something feels weird and I don't quite know what to do. Apple pie, motherfucker, apple pie. I don't know, whatever the word is. But there are certain risk management things that you can do, harm reduction. But why are we empowering wellness centers when I very easily can tell you how to design a beautiful celebration of self at your own home for the fraction of the cost of going anywhere else? And and just to swing back on trip sitters, guides, um, or let's just say going to the jungle and, and meeting very real people that are in this space. I like to say I'm the dental tech. Come see me first. Let's get rid of the low hanging fruit. Take your right. first journey, learn how to surf, learn how to coast, learn what to do when you're, then once you kind of get this low hanging fruit done and you already are familiar with unpacking your baggage, you, you, you kind of get in the hang of that, then go to them and get the deep dive. But if, why, right, if you feel the need to, you, that's right. you might not if you're feel doing the it at need home to. already. Yeah. And so I really think that, um, it's okay. In our industry, people get really angry and frustrated and look what they're doing. They're just going to bastardize this whole thing and they're going to make it commercialize. Da, da, da. Babies, let them do their thing. Because if right. we're here like real mycelium, making connections just with the people next to us, we don't got to do all this big blown one at a time, one person at one grain at a time, yep. one corn at a time. And however the, you guys grow your how stuff. many inoculation points are we trying to make here, guys? Exactly. Just one at a time. Yes. And the yes. other thing too is I think it is helpful when we have we can pick a million books out there. And I don't want to name names because that might not be so great, but all these books are so clinical and so clean and nothing talks to me like an adult in an edutainment type of way. Yes, educate me, but does it have to be so ew? And so, right. you know, I, I'm i a lifelong student. I'm always trying to get a degree or a license or a, I am so over being talked to in the same manner anymore, though, you know, and I think that's the appeal of podcasts and oh, all yeah. these other ways of uh, learning things because we just don't want it uh, yeah. so vanilla anymore give it to me in a way that talks to me a little bit so that's what my hope is with inner edge travel agency is let's go inside a little bit but i i can't because i can't go with you i can give you some really good cliff notes right so let's talk about this you sort of brought this up you said edutainment so you yeah. want to educate people but you don't want it to be so you know boring and clinical and and all that stuff now you're the name of your business inner edge travel agency that's already a little tongue-in-cheek that's already yeah. a little playful um so you've already sort of set set a tone a certain way and i'm sitting here thinking of all the people i, I get a type of direct message a lot and it, it goes like this hey geeky so, you know, you and I, we're on the same page about all this stuff. We love psychedelics, but I have, you know, my brother, he, I, I, I'm going to just give one, the most recent one I got, but my brother, he's got PTSD real bad. And, uh, man, he, boy, does he need psychedelics. He needs to at least try it, but I just can't get him to try it. Yeah. And I think you got this old school thinking of, well, if I do shrooms, I'm a hippie, but I'm not a hippie. So I don't want to do that. And we're in this paradigm shift now. 
Yeah. And so I think one way to ease people's tensions and their reservations is through a, a bit of lightheartedness. Cause I mean, this stuff is work. Do you want to know how many people walk around all day with their iPods or their earbuds in their ear? Uh, they're in their phone. They do not want to connect with reality. They do not even want to be alone with themselves for two seconds to hear what their brain might tell them. And now you're saying, let's go on a trip. So, you know, there is, that's, that's work. And I feel like what you're talking about is addressing a lot of that stuff. I, I can really see a type of person. It's the person that's hesitant, but the person that also says, oh, but yeah, uh, like a lab. I don't want to have a trip at a lab. That also seems weird. Yeah, yeah. So, so I see that, but then now this is what I've been saying for a long time about these clinical wellness centers. There are people that will go do that because it's the only way they'll have their first trip. They'll have the trip, all their trepidations then go away. They realize they're not going to die. They see what it's all about. And probably almost all of them are going to go, oh, I like this, but I'm not going to go pay four grand again to go have that. And yeah. so we are going to be here for those people because there's truly no reason that the majority of people should should need to have that experience in such a clinical setting but again if if that's the only way they have it great i'm glad those places exist but just to add to that they're not going to pay that kind of money every time they want to have that experience so right. who's going to catch them when they fall exactly us. yes but us that's you know the whole um the whole edutainment side of it definitely comes from um i have a little course it's called business is booming and it's where we talk about the things that you know the people with capital are already talking about but they want us to be afraid to discuss right. um it's nothing crazy but it is about how do we elevate ourselves and stay ahead in this industry you know the future favors the brave so kind of leaning into things a little bit we're going to be able to you're able to shape your story your ideas your right. thoughts and that's where um, it really came into play when I told my son, if we didn't have the product, what are we left with? Is it something viable? And right. very often, yes, your message is viable, but is it appealing? Is it in any way anyone wants to even, you know? So absolutely, for all of us out there who um, maybe we don't know quite how to word it or quite how to tell my person, I want them to be able to have something not in the first three chapters before I get, I don't want to get into three chapters deep. I want to open the book and go, Oh shit, right. this is different. Okay. Let me see what it has to say. Right. And in there, I'm telling you, it isn't anything new. It isn't anything crazy. Um, just, you remember that book, the secret, mm -hmm. there is nothing new in the book, the secret. Right. It's just all about visualization. It was just how it was packaged, how it was worded so that it, it met people where they were a little bit more. And well, so, and hold on. It, it was a brilliant marketing strategy yes. because, uh, what's the secret? Oh, it's a thing that I already knew though. <laughs> and that's exactly. And, and I really think it isn't that there isn't good information in there out there right now within our industry. It's a matter of putting it all together in one spot, packaging in such a way that it gives you a 360. Right. You know, in Vegas, I, I am the Cubensis concierge. It's not just healing. Are you going out somewhere? Are you? Well, let me make sure you're still safe. I'm still going to tell you the safe things to do. Because the medicine is going to find you. It's going to find you at a festival. It'll find you at a fort. It's going to find you. But to make sure that um, to the best that I can, I just didn't want to keep pumping product out there. I wanted right. to feel a sense of responsibility and help and assistance. So, you know, some of the stuff that I have coming up, um, how do we help reduce the stigma? And yeah. I thought, oh, well, yeah. Comedy and cooking. Um, so trying to, and I don't like, you know, something you had mentioned um, when we spoke yesterday, I don't want to make light of it. It's a respectful thing um, and it's important, but healing is hard enough as it is. Why do the directions got to be hard too? 
let's make the, not only that, I feel it sets you up for a more positive um, journey. You know, it doesn't feel, oh, yeah. you know, the day before and I'm this and I'm that, but it really, again, this isn't how do I take mush? Not at all. It is DIY designing it yourself, which right. means you are the one who says, you know, two weeks out, I'm going to start watching what I'm eating. I'm going to start cleaning up my diet because guys, if you go to Costa Rica, they're going to tell you the same two weeks prior, you get a little sheet that tells you these are the things you need to do to get ready for your journey. Same thing here. It's just, you're not going to Costa Rica, you know, you're, which you're, is sad, but also, okay, great. I want or, to go to Costa Rica or yeah, just save that for the next right. time. You know, yes, I like that, but just to be able to understand, um, um, that what I am hoping you will experience is something a little more elevated than just integration. Um, okay. And we talked about, um, I'm kind of looking more for a psilosynthesis. I'm really kind of oh. wanting you okay. to embed this whole experience in your whole being. Um, an example I like to give is, you know, a deck of cards are integrated. Doesn't mean you get that ace of hearts when you need it. And my treadmill is integrated in my garage. It doesn't mean I ever go out there and even visit that daggum thing. Right. So integration, deck of cards, synthesis, part of your chemistry. And so I feel like when you have this great prep, uh, um, you have the experience you need. You know, you never can tell what you're going to get, but it's like a box of chocolates. Um, and then that afterglow and the aftercare and how you follow up with your microdosing right after that journey, 72 hours. You know, all of this lends to designing your agenda, designing your whole travels, and then afterward, really making sure that I'm still having fun. You know, I'm still taking my microdose, but I'm going for a walk or I'm taking my microdose and I'm dancing around the house for three songs, or I'm taking my microdose and I'm going to go garden. But, um, so yeah, I want to mention microdosing because my coffee's kicking in, but. All right. So before we micro, before we get into the old microdose of it all, I, I like what you just said. You actually are talking about how to, oh, what word would I use here? You are talking about not letting go of the wisdom perhaps that comes from the, the, the journey mm -hmm. through very specific activities ways to sort of reconnect to some of that stuff um yeah. and i think in that way you def i mean that that is a sort of integration long term but now uh, short term it's interesting you use this phrase psilosynthesis because i have heard so many stories from people where they were just having a trip and they didn't really have a big agenda. They maybe didn't do a whole bunch of set and setting work, um, yeah. but they have a trip and afterwards they make a major life change. Something happens. Yeah. And it, it's an immediate synthesis. It, it is there. I, I've seen that. I, my buddy, Jeff Karras went on a journey, came out a vegetarian. Uh, yeah. I just had on, uh, who was it? I just had on that was talking. Oh, um, Scott Astuni. It was like, you know, I, I went in, uh, had a trip came out over the course of a short period of time. I went from being a, a pack a day smoker to, I don't smoke anymore. Yeah, so crazy. these things do happen that, that psilosynthesis is for sure real. Yeah. And I like the idea that you could even somewhere between integration, which to me suggests if you don't do the work, nothing's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. And yet we've seen clinical trials on smoking cessation and over 40% have one trip and just stop smoking cigarettes. I mean, there's nothing else that successful on this that's planet. Right. That's crazy. That's psilosynthesis for sure. Yep. So I, I think that's a really cool term. Uh, I, I like I, I, I'm, I'm a fan of that. So, okay. You know, so now let's get in. Oh, sorry. You keep talking, no, but then we, we get into quick. microdose. I, I think, um, and I'll we'll use this as a transition. There are so many of those documentaries out there, you know, where they talk about this person went in, 
for a treatment, four or five treatments, whatever. And life was great for six months. Life was great for one year. And then things started to slide back. Right. To me, it kind of does make sense, right? Because um, it took you how long to get into that? How many decades to get yourself right. in a really terrible bind where you're even thinking about one weekend journey isn't going to cut it. You know, right. uh, two weekend journeys aren't going to cut it. It's too exhausting to constantly be in counseling mode to, to right. con oh, how do I do it? You know, always doing that. So to me, that's what microdosing helps us with. Just like if we were going to the gym all the time, you could go to the gym and work out without a supplement, without a pre-workout shake. Sure. But man, the advantage of having a supplement, a pre-workout shake, the, the progress you can make. And I think very often people think microdosing is a medication and it is not, you're going to not, you're not going to be able to achieve. I shouldn't say not going to, you know, no inclusives, but I think you'll find it more difficult to achieve what you're looking for. If you're thinking of it as long as on the long, the lines of a medication, it's a supplement. And anytime you say, you say I'm taking a supplement, you need to identify, well, what am I supplementing? Pre-workout shake, supplementing the gym, microdosing, supplementing your it's shadow right. work, yeah. your meditation, your anything where you're trying to find peace and balance, but those things should go hand in hand, right? So you can't drink your pre-workout shake every day for 30 days and at the end of the 30 days go, well, why am I not swole? Well, because you didn't go to the gym, not once in that whole 30 days. Right. So by trying to connect the two as a means of this is not a medication, I am supposed to be doing something as well, which kind of. Um, oh, also I, OK, now you're talking my language. I love this paradigm shift. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. I love yes. that. And then the other thing, too, is sometimes people go, well, I microdosed for 30 days. I didn't feel anything major. What? Well, how long would you have to go to the gym and work out to get a little bit more swole? Like right. seeing in the mirror, yo, at least 90 for, days. For me, it would be more than 30 days. Yes. Yes, absolutely. My so swole days true. are over. I'm, I'm no, no more swole for me. I'm no getting more, too old. Right. I'm getting too old. But I really do think that when we shift it to that, I go, oh, right. yeah, well, you're absolutely right. I'm not going to see anything quite because it's a supplement. It is not a medication right. and you have to do the work. And I think one of the things that we try to, um, you know, I am planning a retreat in May in Aspen. Um, there is a gentleman out there, Steve Cook, who is going to be helping us coordinate but we're not going to call it a retreat because I think a retreat is um, delusional. You're not coming out to relax. Okay. You're coming out to do some work. And that's why it's going to be called a work trip. Um, my, one of my oh, friends okay. time named Jen. But now you're going to tell her, hey, I got to go on a work mm -hmm. trip. Got to go on this work trip. But the thought is there is work to be done. Yes. And that that journey will happen within your first 36 hours of being there. The remainder of the time is introducing you to ways you can synthesize your experience into yeah. something that lasts longer. Maybe it's uh, woodworking. Maybe it's pottery. Maybe it's just movement, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to be able to introduce people to something new because maybe that's their thing that they never knew. Right. right. That they can just relax into and lose their I don't want to say lose their thoughts but you know like when everything is just free floating and there's no one solid thought everything's just floating on like leaves yes. on a river you think yes. it long enough as you're watching it and then it floats by and then something else that type of you know the thing about um doing microdosing after the big dose I want to talk a little bit about tolerance um there's so many people that say when you're microdosing, two on, two off, two on, two off. Ah, I'm not, I'm not in that group. I'm in the group of you need to do it every day. Okay. There is no doctor out there that says take your Zoloft, which is an SSRI, it elevates your serotonin levels. They don't say two days on, two days off, two days on. You're just kind of doing this with your chemicals, your serotonin levels. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, 
you do your big journey, get your serotonin levels up here, it elevates your tolerance. Because my microdosing is a supplement. It's designed for something different. So let me maintain my afterglow by starting my microdosing. Let me maintain right. this space because this is my spiritual workout space. You know, how am I supposed to get to a workout if I'm just constantly doing this to my serotonin levels? I can't get to a mind space where I can actually unpack any of my shit because right. I'm now doing this to myself. Now, this is so this is interesting. This, uh, of course, you know, there, there's pharmacology to all this that that we would have to get into, but nobody actually knows the pharmacology of the microdosing. Yes. So I think you still have every right to to be saying what you're saying, because uh, we just don't know yet. But I think, the, the, Fadden, it, I think in, in Fadden's book, I think he's the one who says he's a proponent for microdosing daily as opposed to. But again, See, you know why I hate saying names like that? Because I get them all mixed up. It could have been Abraham Lincoln. You know, that's not true. But someone out there. An oh, OG I think I think old like Abe us. Lincoln, he I think he liked the shrooms. I think I he did. did. I think that's why he was such a great president. But yeah. I do think there is someone out there who is a proponent of the daily, again, mm -hmm. for the purpose of. If you look at it from a chemical perspective of what we're doing, yes, I know it's an imperceptible amount. It's supposed to happen in the background. Right. But there are folks that are too nervous to do a big journey. So what I tell them is, well, microdose up front, just microdose first, because what are you really doing? If it's 150 uh, milligrams a day, it's seven and a half grams, but you've slow dripped it. Sure. You've slow dripped it over 30 days. So instead of them doing this three and a half gram to four and a half gram up front, you're just allowing their body to get familiar with the spider tingle is what I caught it. The sure. Peter tingle, you yeah. know, that little, Oh, and you look just like Spider-Man. So anyway, um, what is going on that. this week? This is what everybody is. Everybody's comparing me to Toby Maguire this week. Toby what Maguire is going on all the way? God all the way all right i'm coming for you spider-man i'm gonna i'm at, you but know i really I, do think it uh, allows people to get used to the idea of oh my gosh i'm microdosing mushrooms enough to where they go oh okay maybe i will take a peek at doing a larger dose later maybe so you can onboard and you know just because someone's not ready for something big it's okay you know let right. them start here somewhere little and then they they get that feeling of Oh, wow. I don't even know what's up today, but the green things are greener and the blue sky is bluer. And, and it's that slow dissolve of right. crap. That yeah. was built so, up, so. so I can tell you this, uh, you know, my early reading said one day on two days off, that you should be off it more than you're on it and that your microdosing shouldn't be for the rest of your life. It should be for a period of time, one or two months, and then you should take some time off and reevaluate. That's how I started. Yeah. I then evolved into, well, every once in a while, I'll do it more often than one day on, two days off. And then I started hearing a lot of people tell me that they, they were on Monday through Friday and off Saturday and Sunday. And I tried that. And for me, that did not work. But now I will say this. You are making an interesting point. I don't know enough about the the actual pharmacology of what's going on to know this. I actually don't think anybody does. But if it's an imperceptible dose, if this is supposed to be, we have no somatic actual sensory, right. you, you know, symptoms from a being proper, on this, yeah, a, a proper, proper microdose, microdose then okay. So, so we build up a tolerance, but if, as long as we're not upping our dose to feel it, That's we're right. just hitting that, is that doing something to our neurochemistry? I don't know. I, you know, I'd have to talk to spirit pharmacists. I'd have to talk to my Same. buddy, Dr. Rick, and yeah. even they probably don't have the answers to those questions. Yeah. This yeah. is just stuff we don't know yet. So, yeah. um, you know, we're all free people. I fully believe that this is my body. That's your body. I get to do what I want with mine. You get to do what you want with yours. Yep. And so if, if and people want to give I'm this a try. And the things that I'm talking about too is strictly with psilocybin. I am strictly a silly girl. I'm not okay. in any other lanes. Okay. Um, if something that, that 
anything that I'm offering happens to work with another type of psychedelic, I would not know. I, I mean, you know, right. I try to follow the science of it. And to me, there was so much talk about tolerance. The point of two days on and two days off was so you don't build a tolerance. Right. Right. It, it, mm -hmm. To me, that's I, I need to do, get some work done. So I need to elevate my serotonin levels to keep me in this sweet spot so I can do the work I need to do. Sure. But otherwise, bouncing up and down, and again, because it acts like an SSRI, we don't do our Zoloft two on, two off, two on, two off. Mm -hmm. Because why? They want you to elevate your serotonin right. levels and keep yeah. them in the sweet spot. That's why sure. you take it every day. Right. So, and again, you're absolutely right. My thought isn't, uh, for you to, for anyone to do microdosing forever, it's that, it, that, and that's why we're leaning into the other things you do in conjunction with, so yeah. that one day you're just doing the things you're leaning into and not relying. But I will say I microdosed every day for 12 months. Um, and then it was a little bit more pure, um, a sporadic for like the next three to four months. But it took me that long to get my brain straight, you know, mm -hmm. and I just took it as a supplement with my daily vitamins and it, it gave me, you know, change your mind space to shift your life space. You know, it was my mind that needed to shift. And so let's start there and really doing that homework and doing that work. So, but you know, whether you do, um, a reset dose up front followed by microdosing or microdosing first, then a little bit of break because you do want to uh, lower those tolerance levels. So you have a crisper, clean journey, but you can still do microdosing before you do a reset right. journey. But the thought about doing them together really is following the serotonin levels. And yeah, I am not, I go to spirit pharmacist as well, you know, to check out, but that's where I have to interject that whole, you got to do your own adulting. I am a peer to peer, uh, recommender. I am not licensed in anything, right. but I have been doing it for quite some time. And the folks who give me feedback have been finding success with the way we go about designing their own journey. I don't even want to say the way I do it. It's not the way I right. do it. It's the recommendations I give so you can design your own. I like that. Um, so let's do stuff. this. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about what you are hearing from people. Cause I imagine not everybody that comes to you is absolutely green has never you know had any experience i want to hear about the people who have had psychedelic experiences before they meet you and work with you and what they say about the work afterwards like how they compare it to their experiences before they tried not your way right, right? <laughs> um but but yeah i'd like to hear some of that feedback or some maybe tell a, a cool story maybe something okay. some, somebody There's, told um... Two, two big ones, the two big ones that come to me mostly is I never thought about doing it as a celebration of self. I never thought about kicking everybody out of the house. I always try to be quiet in my own space or in my own room. Mm. So that whole thought was very freeing. And there's been a lot of naked journeys from what I understand. I'm not there, but the whole thing of minimal clothes, never thought about that before. Oh my gosh, it made a difference. Um, the other is I try to help people design areas for the waves that we go through. So you might have your garage set up. Maybe that's where you smoke your cigarettes, but nowhere else. But also that's where the loud music is. That's where it's kind of bumping a little bit. Right. But in my regular house where I plan to be low lights, no TV, no electronics. And I tell everyone to set up a charcuterie board, not because you're going to be hungry. Think about the fact that your senses are oversaturated right now. So if I'm an explorer and I want to experience, well, let me have my space set up with some flowers. Don't do aromatherapy. It's, well, in my opinion, it's just too much. Man, that should give me a headache. It was too strong. Flowers are the perfect amount. And it's not just flowers for the smell. 
you get lost in a carnation, just looking at it up close, you could be there for 15 minutes. That's lovely. But the flavors, things like pineapple, grapes, a mm. pickle, just to, oh my gosh, you know, just the sensory feeling of it all. Right. But the biggest, I think, the that I think I get from, um, sorry about that. The biggest okay. feedback I think I get from um, folks is the music. Um, a lot of people, oh, I want the most wild, wackadoo wackadoozy, whatever, whatever. That's partly from it. Um, but um I so sorry, I totally got distracted. Um Okay. Okay. You're you're talking about uh I was asking about feedback from people who had had yeah. psychedelic experiences yeah. prior to yeah. You. yeah. Probably the other thing is, is I tell them when you're building your playlist, don't fill it full of two, you know, you want to have one special playlist that has childhood songs, not high school got my heart broken because we have a lot of inner child work that needs to happen. And I found that when I'm journeying and I put on these old 70s songs there's no other memory tied to it than sweetness, nostalgia, you know, standing on the stool with the brush and just singing right. ABBA or whatever. Um, but it made me cry a little bit, but not in a bad way. Right. And so I think those are the biggest things, how to have your area set up. Um, oh, probably the daytime journey. A lot of folks don't think about doing a daytime journey, but man, does it last a lot longer and the fractals and the holograms in the room are just mm. crazy amazing because I've never seen my room with the lights bouncing in this way before, right. you know, but I, I think when, when you're able to say, okay, hang on a second, I'm not going to just treat this like high school tripping. Right. I want to design a celebration of self because who knows what I'm going to see when I do it in such a different way, such a different manner. Right. Um, so probably the tiniest little things, again, it's like the secret. It isn't anything really big, but when you bring it all together in one nice, neat little package, it's like, oh shit, that makes sense. But that's the perfect thing about it. Once you do it once or twice, you're free. You're on your you design the hell out of now, whatever, and however you want to do it. But I try to tell people, remember, this is about you and you alone. It's a solo journey. It's not even, well, me and my friend, well, me and my hubby, well, me and my boyfriend. Okay. But that's taking it back to a social space until right. you do it alone by yourself, where you feel 100% free, no social cues necessary. You can fart if you want, you can, this, you can put, all that stuff can happen when it's a true celebration of self. Um, wow. You just hit like maybe the biggest selling point I've ever heard that I could, fart? I can fart without concern of social consequence. Wow. Yeah. That is it. Yeah. But, but I mean, I'm, 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 I'm sort of making a joke, but, but actually that is something Or same, same with saying, you know, that you're hearing a lot of people do this naked. Yeah, I'm like, man, if I'm in Costa Rica right. with a bunch of people I don't know, I'm not stripping naked in front of That's you. Right. I don't fucking know you, That's Um, right. especially now we've heard about some of these shamans who are taking advantage of people on yep. their trips and all that stuff. Yeah, get the nope, not for me. Yeah. Uh, Again, another great reason of why um, doing it at home or doing it. Yeah. The other thing is sometimes our home is the source of our imbalance. So shouldn't that be where I try to get back into balance? Or why am sure. I going to leave it so I can come back into it when I come back? Like I had this great, wonderful experience and then I yeah. come back here to this or wow. you know, whatever. Yeah, so. that is also amazing. That's like uh, you go on a vacation and you're like, oh, I love life. It's amazing. So cool. Right. No consequence, no responsibilities. You're spending yeah. your money on cool shit 24-7. And then you come back home and you're like, ugh. Ugh. Yeah. 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 And the I biggest like reason for, um, I tell folks, you know, when we're addressing those three areas, life space, health space, and uh, mind space, when I talk about life space, that is where you are going to clean the house. Stop cleaning the house for guests. This time, 
You are cleaning the house for you. And let me tell you on the time that I did a journey and I came downstairs and I had the tingle going, I knew we were getting started. I saw my kitchen island and it was clean and clear of everything except for my little charcuterie. I actually laid my head. I'm like, oh my God, I love this counter because you never see it clean. Right. And to do all this tiny stuff for myself to go, oh my God, my bed, it's just for me. And you, you know, whatever, there's something to, Yo, that. you were like, you were like the Maria Kondo of, uh, uh, uh of having your it. own private trip. Yes. I love you're that. How it. to make everything more special. Yeah. Um, I don't know about you, but for me, any, you know, if, if you had a trip and you looked at, uh, some, some wood paneling and all of a sudden, you know, it started moving and talking to you or just getting all fractal and weird, you never look at that wall again, the same. That's right. Right. Like you then now have the significant memory. And so it deepens your connection with everything. And we usually talk about that. I'm guilty of this. I always say, well, that's why I like to be in nature because I I do. I love nature. That's where my spirituality is definitely grounded. Um, But boy, we spend so much time at home. So why not develop and foster uh, a a deeper connection to our home and, and all that stuff? I think that's very cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, speaking yeah. of that, though, let me ask you about this. Um, <clears throat> do you do any assessment work as far as, because uh, unfortunately, um, I have been in the space a couple of years now and have already heard numerous stories about people. Uh, well, I shouldn't say numerous, but I have heard stories about people who didn't address the dangers within their home. So mm-hmm. as ex-military, right, like if you got a bunch of guns in your house, I'm probably, you know, you just don't know where you're going on that trip and you don't. So you, you, you definitely got to do some safety precautions. What kind of stuff do you talk to people as far as that goes? Like how to make your home safe for the trip? I I think that's excellent because that's exactly why we address um, life space. Right. I mean, how many times when we're journeying, everyone is always set and setting, set and setting, and and we don't ever branch outside of that. So absolutely. I think life space is really important, whether you're talking about um, uh, guns, firearms or drugs. And by that, I mean Mm -hmm. more serious drugs, you know, where you're tripping and you're like, oh, I'm going to go, you know, do crack or free race or anything that just involves stuff like that. Right. Um, that's why your life space is so, because do you have people you can trust that will either take that stuff away or right. lock it up in such a way? Very often, I, I, I would like to think when you have been prepared appropriately, this is a hundred percent consent for you to do this. And so I think it's a little bit different than people who get caught off guard completely. They're tripping balls. And now all of a sudden shit's a mess because they're in a social environment or there's someone going, what's wrong with you? And what are you doing? Why are you tripping? Um, But yeah, there is a certain amount of, if you have those things in your home and you don't think home is a good place to do this journey, that's okay. We're still going to find another space, but that's where we might go. Is there a cabin? Is there a, you know, um, a suite where it just has a bedroom? And I try to tell folks, don't, don't go to a space though, where it's still only one room. Right. I I just, now it's not a celebration of self and you're just trying to take mushrooms so you can get, get it out of you. You know, when we're talking a true celebration of self, you, you need that room to, relax, but it's still a really good point as far as having dangerous items in the house. Well, and you don't even need to have dangerous items in the house. I just had a buddy um, who had been talking to me about wanting to grow mushrooms. He was getting off heroin. He was in a Suboxone clinic and he did not, he wasn't taking a Suboxone. And I was already like, bro, this is how you get off heroin is take Suboxone for a while and then taper off that for some reason he he had convinced himself he wasn't going to take the suboxone magic mushrooms were going to solve all his problems yeah. he just had to do enough of them he had a you know a, a double triple level heroic dose trip 
in that process, he jumped across a ravine at some point in time and is now sitting in the hospital with two external fixators on his tibia and femur. <clears throat> and yeah, that so like that there is absolutely a billboard for go home, clear your space out, make it safe, have your trip at home. Like, yeah, yeah cause he, yeah. he was just roaming around. Mm -mm. Yeah. Did not have that. Now, what do you say about people who, you know, you're talking about clearing your home, having the space. Uh, some people do not have more than a room. Some people do not have, um, a bunch of people that they have to kick out of their house. They might live alone. Are, are there any special accommodations you suggest those people make if they really don't have people they would tell? Like, how do you handle those people? Like I'm all alone. I don't, my, my family's all gone or they're estranged or whatever. Oh. I don't have anybody I have to tell. So I'm just going to do this by myself. No one's going to know what's going on. Do you approach those people differently? You know, I think it's um, really interesting, like talking with you, if you, you know, we've, we've chatted for a little while, you and I, there's nothing to me that's a red flag of this person couldn't, like if you said, hey, Jen, I'm really interested in doing this. I don't really have anybody else in my life to tell that I'm about to do this journey or whatever. Um, so what I always recommend if I don't, if I'm uncomfortable with you as it is, I will do my best to prepare you, but I also have no problem telling you, I don't know if it's your time right now. I I, I like that. Yeah. You know, I'm not quite sure. Um, I want to give you all the information I can, cause you don't want to just shake your hand loose of someone, you know, like a booger on your finger either, yes. but you also want to be upfront with them and say, there's some flags here for me. Um, I am not a doctor, but I will tell people right up front from spirit pharmacist, hey, if you've ever been on lithium or any of these other things, I don't know that right now is your time for you. Or what I'll tell them is, I think psychedelics can still be in your future, but you're going to have to do it under guidance. You're going to have right. to do it with somebody watching you. To me, that's the appropriate environment yep. for the hospitals and the wellness yep. centers. Absolutely. Absolutely. But that exceeds me. But here is what I do tell, again, psilocybin only. If all you know is you can go, I can get, go get a room, but I know I will be by myself. I do tell everyone, harm reduction technique. Put a freaking piece of paper in your pocket that says I took mushrooms and how much you took. Right. Leave also one in the hotel room on the, because you don't want people going, oh my God, they're high on meth. No, right. I just took mushrooms. So treat me for the right thing. Right. So that's the best that I can offer is right. it is supposed to be peer to peer. We are supposed to be adults. However, there are going to be those of us who want to push that envelope. Well, harm reduction, stick a freaking something in your pocket that says I took eight grams of mushrooms. Um, don't pump me. With, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Don't give me something that isn't for mushrooms. Right. Um, I think that's, probably the most responsible thing because people are going to people they're going to do whatever oh, yeah. so the most responsible thing you can do is leave word behind when all your communication goes out the window at least um whoever comes across you would hopefully and, and then you know people will reach out to the right people if you say it's mushrooms and someone will be like okay here's what we can do for that individual and and able yeah. to get you help quicker yeah than, if making people guess we you know i work in an er so so we definitely encounter patients where we're like god we sh we sure would love to know what they are on right now so because if we about, actually if knew no in their pocket then i you'll I know would. yeah jen we, was there so no i'm teasing yeah but, we we yeah. would be inclined to 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 trust hey this notice for anybody that finds me all I consumed tonight was magic mushrooms. That and would again, definitely. Again, I know that sounds kind of silly. You know, there are no one's going to take. I, I'm not talking about everyone. I'm simply talking about people who are trying to design their own journey, who are trying to be proper about it, trying to go through it in a responsible way, um, but want to have that experience without, you know, going to a right. forest or a festival. <clears throat> yep. I have people who say, hey, do you think I should do this before this trip or should I do that before this trip? And I'm like, 
you, it sounds like you should because it's it's an idea you came up with that seems to be making you feel you know a little safer about it. So yeah, any idea you have where you go, I wonder if I should X, Y, and Probably Z. Should. Just go do that then. Yeah, yeah, just go do that. Anything you do, that is part of your set. You know, any preparation work that you do is going to have an influence on, on that trip. The like, I'm I'm out at the bar or I'm at a rave. Some guy walks up to me and just says, "Do do I want you know some mushroom gummies?" And I just shove them in my face with no thought. That that's going to be a different trip. I'm not saying that can't be a cool trip too. That's but right. Yes. That's it's not going to be the same. It's yeah, just they can't all be meshed into one. Well, I think, you know, there is something to be said about having fun and yes. experiencing that, you know, the thump, the feeling of connection to all these people. Yeah. But there's also something to be said when I have some healing I think I'd like to do and right. I want to experience something that's just for me and about yeah. me. Um, and in those instances, I got you covered. You just need to find your local inner edge travel agent. Exactly. And they'll help you. They'll help yes. you plan an agenda. Yes. Yeah. The um. I think we have not talked a lot about this on the show, but I think this is worth talking about. Is this idea of right? So many of us, if if we're if we have PTSD, it doesn't make us happy to have it. It makes us sad. It makes us anxious. It makes us horrified. If if we have clinical depression, if we're bipolar. Uh, any of these maladies of of our mental health that put us in a negative space, um, we have every right to want to feel good. So if you are occasionally just having a recreational experience on a psychedelic, cool, fine, great, yeah. that's fine. It's okay to feel good. I mean, this is literally why most people do any drug they do, right? right. I go yeah. to the bar. I want to hit on a girl. I'm so nervous. A couple drinks. What's up? I'll How be you doing? Hey, let's, baby. Let, yeah. let's talk, right? So this is what we do with all our drugs. We just want to get in, in a, a, a better mind state. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with wanting to feel good mm -hmm. or euphoric or more connected to your body. These are all great things. Um, but separately from that is this other level of, of working the trip and uh, getting more out of your, right? Yeah. And if I'm right. going to Japan, I'm buying the the tour guide book. I'm watching sure? YouTube That's videos. Nice. I'm ready. And when I get there, I'm gonna kill that trip. That's right. I'm gonna That's see. Right. And right. where's our book? Where's our book to do that? You know, when we're right. journeying, we've yes. got so many clinical books. We've got so many this books. We've got so many. Where's yeah. ours that just helps step us through? Yes. Um, but I, you know, you you mentioned something there. Um, you know, people being depressed or having anxiety or PTSD. And, you know, one of the things that I'd like to throw out is I think we need to stop living up to our label. Um, sure. We need to, instead of going, well, I am the best depressed person because I take my medicine, I do my journals, I do that. But yet you've absorbed the title. You, you haven't thought I need to get rid of the title as in these are the things right. I need to do to get out from underneath that. And so I think when we're searching for a um, a better way, I think it starts with that understanding that yes. you were just given a title that, that that is not a part of you or who you are. Well, sometimes I mean, so I, I have a I have a, a take on that because growing up, apparently on two different occasions, they wanted to put me on Ritalin. They couldn't stand me. They said, this kid's got attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Uh, man, he's a problem in school. And my mom would be like, is he getting all A's? Yeah. Does he know all the answers? Yeah. Okay. So you you got a problem with him. It sounds like he's crushing school. Yes. I'm not. And she, she had a background in early childhood development. She was like, I do not want him labeled. Yeah. The minute he gets labeled, every teacher he ever encounters is going to prejudge him and put him in a box and immediately label him a problem in class. Yep. Now, did I become that in many situations? If you were a shitty teacher, oh yeah, I, I definitely, you didn't like me. But but I had astoundingly amazing relationships with great teachers. That's right. And uh, phenomenal experiences uh, in K through 12 uh, quite often, had some bad ones, but I cannot thank my mother enough for resisting the urge to label me that. Yeah. 
Now, my counterpoint, though, is that then when I went off to college, I knew none of this. I just thought I was unique and special and amazing. I didn't never in a million years did I think, well, I'm unique, special and amazing because I my brain doesn't work like everybody else's. Mm -hmm. And I went to college and I made a bunch of mistakes. You know, if I liked the class, I'd get an A plus. If I hated the class, I'd fail it. And so I felt unsupported. In hindsight, I was not diagnosed till an adult. Yeah. So there are really two sides to that coin, in my opinion. But for sure, the minute you rely on your label yes. or you sit back on your label and go, I'm just this label, I'm, you know, what's that line in that song? Blame it on my ADD, right? Like <laughs> I got an excuse. Just blame yeah. it on my ADD. Yeah. OK, great. Yes, you will deal with this this handicap your whole life. But, you know, do, do you want to be the, the quadriplegic that j just sits at home and wastes away into nothing? Or do you want to go play some murder ball? Yes. You know what I mean? Like, yes. 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 Own and transcend your situation as much as you possibly can. I think that's a wonderful idea. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I don't, think we just don't have become to, your label. Don't yes. become your label. And don't not just become your label, but be the best damn label, you know, like almost a, a pride in it or something, you know, wearing it as something of, well, this is just what I am. And so these are the things that I do. And not to say, you know, obviously, to a degree, there are labels, but don't be the label, you know, you use the label to help describe characteristics yes. of right. yourself, not this right. is my one head title, you know, right. my one and only thing. But we see people do that all the time. I mean, so there are nurses that I work with where, oh my God, it's their whole identity. I'm a yeah. nurse. I'm a nurse. I'm a nurse. Bossy. I tell you what to do. Uh, here's the rule. Da, da, da. I mean, they just live up to the most, you know, stereotypical example of, of what a nurse is. And then there are other people like me where that is just the tiniest fraction of who I am. It really informs who I am on no level. Yeah. Um other than maybe some behavioral shifts that happened once I did that. But that's, it's really profound. If we latch onto a label, our ego then there you go, yeah. is going to be hindered by that to some degree, right? Mm -hmm. Like whether you're a superstar, you know, in Hollywood and, and you think you're so special. Yeah. And that's when you start making some, that's when you become Hugh Grant in the back of a, a taxi cab. That's when you become Kevin Spacey doing some super freaky ass weird shit. You know, you got to be careful hold latching onto any label too much because it limits who you actually are like this infinitely unique being. Yeah. <clears throat> I always label joke around that. I say your, your labels and your egos can be in the car that can just never steer. Ego can be in the back seat. Ego can be in the passenger seat. All my labels. I'm a teacher. Right. I'm a retired. They can be in the car, but nobody gets permission to steer. And I feel like right. when I sense somebody is steering or somebody is even driving from the damn pass, like my ego will come into play. And I really have to check, you know, when you do something that you're good at and then you get people give you feedback and that feedback more often than not is positive, right? Your ego will start to drive, oh. grab that steering wheel. And I have to keep going, get off, get right. off. You, right. you know, when people go, Oh, Jen, you, you helped us. No, I didn't. I am simply the usher. I allowed you to meet up with this other thing. And, right. you know, I don't want that kind of credit. I don't want that kind of responsibility, if you will, because again, it doesn't empower people they think, me, no, it was you, I provided you a safe space for your own power to come out. I just gave you permission to tell your own power to come out. You know, what? however, I probably undid what I just said, but you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. I don't want to be the source of anything. I want you to be the source. You are supposed to be in the driver's seat. So yeah, even, you know, the things doing what we do. Um, you got to make sure that ego, sometimes she got to go all the way in the back seat. And that was something, you know, we see a lot in what we do. People talk about ego death and no, I'm sorry. That's, I you agree. never kill your ego. No, Ego is the one that told me, why don't you start a business? Ego is the one that told me, I think you can do this, Jen. You need to keep at it. Now that doesn't 
ego needs when I when people say they experience ego death, I don't try to correct them. I know what you mean. Basically, what you're meaning is you had a journey where you realized you ain't all that. Go sit down. That's all that happened. Right. Nobody died. Nothing happened like that. Not at all. It was just, it felt like a big ass slap in the face when you realize you are not all that in a bag of chips. Right. You know, that's all that it just tempers where you're coming from. It makes you come from a more compassion. Well, pick whatever words you want. For me, I come from a more, um, kinder, gentler place, you know, 23 years in the military, I can be pretty, I can be pretty forced to, to the degree where I'm always having to check myself, you know, right. that's not how you, when you're trying to attract rabbits, you got to learn how to make a sound like a carrot. You can't be loud and screaming and ah, you know, so, but for me being a very loud and screaming, ah, kind of person, I have to learn something new. And I think my new was me checking my ego. Um, I let her, I let her right up front sometimes, but for the most part, she got to hang out in the back because she's loud. But yeah. I, I, I like to her. tie mine up and put it in the trunk to tell right. you the truth. But <laughs> well, I need okay. her sometimes though, because if right. something's coming up and I'm, I'm nervous or right. I'm scared, I'm like, okay, ego, you now get up here in the passenger seat. Cause I need to, I, I need to feel like I can do this. I, you know, I need that confidence right. boost for a minute. Um, just until we get to her going, then you might have to go back in the back, but it, it's just right. one of those things where I think we try to say ego death too much. And that's just not what it is at all. Well, I know people who, who, who talking about some ego death and, I don't think it died. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> right. right. You, you might experience ego death in, in the moment of that journey, but you come back to your ego. Yeah. You yes. did. You metaphorically had an ego death momentarily. Yeah. Um, wh whether well, you it's just a, saw your ego, you saw how sure arrogant we can be. Right. And we think just because we saw it made a change and it didn't. Right. There's still maybe a couple more journeys necessary before, you know, there's a balance because it, it is just a balance. It isn't, you know, I joke about saying my ego in the backseat, but it really is about balancing everything to um, feel feel better about, you know, am I doing okay? Am I doing right? Am I doing this? I'm, right. You know, the whole thing about being an entrepreneur is, oh my God, it's the biggest mind fuck ever. You, you know, you get uh, imposter syndrome. And then you get, well, dang it. I quit. I'm not doing it. I've spent so much. I quit. I quit. I just so you can start again tomorrow. Right. And you know, I, I, I think people confuse, you know, that word shaman, the, the thing about anyone being a shaman, whether you, wherever you're located is I think most of the legit OG shaman will tell you they hate it. They don't want to do it. They don't want to be this thing. But it's the given talent and it follows you. It goes with you. You know, we were on this call and I got two calls from people who yeah. need attention. Um, and not yep. that it's a bad thing, but it is just one of those. Right. I have yeah. to, you know, you have to turn things off to maintain your own sanity and um, keep making sure your ego isn't trying to take the steering wheel and uh make sounds like rap uh, like carrots so you can attract the rabbits who are very uncomfortable with sharing their hurts or where they're coming from or what right. they're wanting to achieve so um and then of course there's the veterans and the veterans started it all because the whole point back in 2016 was i wanted a program to help veterans with ptsd right. and so now my trademark title I don't know if I use the right one, but it's shifting post-traumatic stress disorder into post-traumatic spiritual development. If you got to have a label, let me give you a positive one. Then let's like try it. and change that into something better. I like it. Yeah. The, so I, uh, it's, it's cool that you talked about the, you know, thinking about giving up and, and all that kind of stuff. I think that's very honest. I don't think a lot of people talk like that, uh, or are that honest about things. Um, I, I can tell you this, I, I look around and, and I'm looking at what I'm doing and it's not motivated because I have, you know, a substrate business. It's not motivated because I sell X, Y, and Z. 
it has nothing to do with anything but wanting to myceliate this community more, bring more people together, show off more people, like just hold this multifaceted diamond up for everyone to see how amazing it is. Like this is, this community is full of amazing people with amazing agendas. Um, but yeah, every week it's a, it's a lot of work, it's no money. It's a lot of work, uh, mm -hmm. devotion. You have to feel called to it. And you have to feel like like it matters and it makes a difference. So I, I commend you. I, I'm I'm doing the same thing. I'm always trying to come up with 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 a way to stop because it's so much work. But I can't. I can't I stop. Know. For the first time in my life, I feel called to it. So yeah. the 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 call just keeps. It's like the little movie scene where they hear a little whisper in the wind and they follow it. That's that's yeah. what I'm doing right now. So I really really that resonated with me the the whole like and you're just you feel like you're you're yeah. on the track well, and i think you know on. one of the things that i those you know when we're doing something like this um to try and help shift our thoughts towards passive income you know sure. i'm working on a book i'm working on a mushroom murder mystery game working on a scavenger hunt like all these things because yes i i, I do want to be a business owner but I want my business to run itself. I do not want sure. to be a manager for my own business. I want to right. pop in and check in on it on occasion. Mm -hmm. So while I am still trying to maintain the things that I do that require me personally, I'm also trying to keep in mind what is some good passive income, little pamphlets, little guides, little journals, anything. Sure that um, normally would be a, a phone call or a conversation. Well, let me put that down. What is something that I'm constantly getting asked over and over? Can I put that down in a little pamphlet, a little brochure, a little something? But then when you start thinking along those lines, I feel your passive income ideas start to expand and you go, oh, I could do this, I could do this. And then that will start to shape itself. So that's kind of like where I am right now. While yes, I'm doing 40 day, 45 day programs with people to help them um, um, uh, be an inner edge traveler. I, I don't want to chat necessarily one on one with people for the rest of my time. I I I want to help other people learn what I'm doing because they are one to I could talk to people all day person after person after that's wonderful I want to give you the script that you use to talk to people every you know I don't want to be the one to talk yes but at the same time um wanting to build something I don't want to have have done this for the last seven years and then at the end have nothing to show for it but a really cool logo right so passive income right now that's something that I push the folks who are um going through a business is booming class with me. What's your passive income? I know what you're telling me what your main business is. I love it. I dig it. I think you should do it. But what is your passive income? T-shirts, that can be, but mm, T-shirts are being, you know, drop ship T-shirts, perfect. Drop ship booklets, per, you know, just what are you doing to keep no overhead? No, over. that's not, in my opinion, that's not passive. If I've got to go touch it, it's not passive. Right. So being able to put up infographs, puzzles, charts, whatever, um, heck, someone out there could, you know, those big old mushroom posters mm -hmm. that you can buy and they have all the mushrooms. Well, hey, somebody go out there, get one of those, put it on a jigsaw, create a puzzle. Right. There are enough of us mushroom lovers. I would totally do a mushroom puzzle, you know, but these are the things that I'm talking about passive income. Um, what are you doing to help solidify all this work that you've put into whatever your program is, right. but to, uh, have it bring in money so you can keep doing the fun stuff. Like I keep wanting to do fun stuff. I don't want to do, but I've created a business around it. So guess what right. I have to do today? I have yep. to cook oats, yep. 50 pound bag of oats. I got to get done today after we get off this call. Oh yeah. I will roll my eyes. I'm, you know, I'm pouting about it, but I'll still do it. Yeah. So I hear you. Yeah. I have, I have run three separate small businesses. One was very successful. The other two I loved, but financially was not successful. Yeah. And, uh, and I've worked for the man and yeah. there's definitely pluses and minuses to both. Um, when I'm working for the man, I wish I was working for myself. And when I'm working for myself, I wish I was working for the man. 
And yep. anybody that's had both experiences knows exactly what I'm talking about. Yep. But at the yep. end of the day, if you've read like Rich Dad, Poor Dad or some of these mm -hmm. other books, you know, uh, wealthy people definitely figure out how to make their work or their money work for them. So yes. that's yes. that's sound. Exactly. That's sound advice for sure. Yes, absolutely. Yep. And, you know, the other thing, too, is I think um, it's important for us to figure out there is a difference between being happy and doing something that's fulfilling. Um, yep. Just this past year, I realized my business is fulfilling, but does not necessarily make me happy. Right. Happiness yep. is coming from elsewhere, other stuff. And I think it took a lot of pressure off my business when I stopped trying, I stopped saying this sentence, well, you have your own business. Why aren't you happy? Well, that was the sentence I had to kind of get rid of. Right. You have your own business and what do you want to do to make your ha self happy need to be, I feel need to be separated or at least right. understood from a separate perspective, you know? Right. Yeah. The whole, so, I mean, I've, I've touched on this a couple of times in the podcast. So when I was younger, I was quite a talented trumpet player. I got a bunch of full ride scholarships for that. I, I went, uh, toured Europe one summer and was really debating about, you know, making my life playing trumpet, making music. And I went on that first professional gig touring in Europe and, uh, it soured my love for music in a way I cannot express to you to the point where I sold my horn and said, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. That, that extreme. Now that's, that's geeky. I'm always, man, I love making decisions. I will make big monumental decisions like that. And then, you know, regret it three years later, but yeah, there, you know, you do not have to, this whole, like, if you find the thing you love, you know, you'll never work a day in your life. Maybe there are certain little instances where that's true. Sometimes it's okay to have those two things separate. Here's how I make money. Here's how I, I, I am happy. Those do and not. not only that, but there's a lot of lovely ideas out there to date. You know, like I sure. think that's the other thing is we, we do find that one thing and we think we got to marry it right away. Like this right. is it yep. forever and for lifelong. And then it's harder to break away of it or even harder yet to let go of it because you think, oh, I've poured so much time and attention and effort. Um, but I think if we think more along the lines of, I'm going to date this idea for a while, right. I'm just going to try this on. And if anything, maybe it's just to get experience out of it. And it isn't the, but I have flipped my, oh, I'm going to this, I'm going to this, I'm going to this. I am full of incomplete projects, you know, but it's the world of ADHD. We just it's the world of ADHD. Uh, yeah, especially for, when I'm working, I will yes. have like four projects out and be and bounce from each of them, flitter from each. Um, and folks, are, well, why don't you just do the one to get it done? Oh, that'll be so boring. I won't even do the one. So if I have at least four or five out, hey, I make progress on four or five as right. opposed yes. to yep. nothing at all on any. No. All about so, that. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. You should have seen me when I was a contractor, uh, in the beginning, I was so lightning fast. I, I was like double speed of anybody else. I was a beast <laughs> and that, but the finishing touches, the final walkthrough, and then the punch list on those final things to make everybody happy to get, to get my last check, which was always where any profit was there to is, begin with. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. It, you had to hold a gun to my head to finish some of those little old doodaddy things. It was so obnoxious. I yeah. know that's, I know. that's our plight that we're, we're, we're great starters. We're terrible finishers. That's yeah. right. That's right. It, it's really true. Um, well, I love this whole thing. Um, I, Yay. I can tell you for sure. A lot of people that I talk to, they're like, man, how do I get my brother-in-law to do this? How do I get this person I love and care about to do this? I can't figure it out. I can't figure it out. Yeah. And I give them some ideas, but you know, they've tried all those ideas already. I love how you're trying to keep it fun. I love how you're trying to, um, destigmatize, you, you know, maybe some trepidations people have about this. I, I think you are definitely on the right track to like, yes, edutainment. I think there is nothing wrong with having that approach to it. I don't think it delegitimizes anything, any of the quality work you're doing. I can tell for a fact that, that you are definitely helping people. Um, I, I can just feel it. It's, it's, I, I, so. I can see it's there. 
Yeah. So I think um I think anybody watching, if if you guys are looking for more out of your trips or you are uh you got some friends and family members that you just can't twist their arm hard enough and you need somebody else to, you know, uh, as she said, you know, attract the rabbits with the carrots type of thing. Um, you guys can reach out to Jennifer. All her contact information will be in the description here. Um, yeah. And I just want to thank you so much for coming on, taking time out of your day. This is how I know you're busy is you got like two calls while we were talking to do, to, to do your calling, to, to do yeah. what you do. Yeah. So that's wonderful. I tried right. to give everyone a forewarning. I'd be out of pocket for a little bit, but it's totally cool. I appreciate you having me on this. You know, it's difficult to tell people what I do quickly. Right. Although I am working on my 11 second elevator pitch. Absolutely. <laughs> but I think very often um, they think it's a sitter or a guide service where it isn't. And so really just trying to make clear that, um, it's all about empowering that solo traveler so you can design I love that. yourself. So, I love yeah. that. Sit your own trip DIY. Sit yes. I love Sit that. Yourself. Yeah. That is a, that is amazing. All right. Well, thank you so much. We will be in touch. I'm sure we'll hear from you again. Maybe, I'm definitely yes. doing more integration, more back end or front end discussions. So I'm sure we'll have you on again to do more. Absolutely. Of I appreciate it. Anytime. Thanks. All right. Take care. You have a good one. You too. All right, guys. That was Jennifer Isom of the Inner Edge Travel Agency. Uh, it's fun. I like that. I like that metaphor, right? We all say it's a trip, right? Where did that metaphor, where did that term come from? It is a trip. There's a takeoff. Cru you hit cruising altitude. There's a landing. Sometimes it's bumpy. Sometimes there's turbulence, all that good stuff. But at the end of the day, um, you know, Almost every time we, we arrive safely to our destinations. And, and I really love how she's focused on empowering people to do some of this work in their home. You don't have to be with people. You don't have to go to Sequoia National Forest. You don't have to um, find some tremendous retreat to go to. You can do this at your own home. Um, and many people do. Many people have great trips that way. Um, and I, th I think for me, the thing that my big takeaway was, man, if you got a family member who's just still hesitant and, and you haven't won them over on having their first trip, you know, Jennifer might be the one to talk them into it. Um, so, so give her, give her a shout. Uh, if you guys are interested in learning a little bit more about what she does and how she works, um, I, I was uh, definitely impressed and uh, love hearing just a new way to do things for sure. Anyway, I hope you guys uh, are liking this. I want feedback. You know, uh, what episodes do you want to see? What do you want us talking about? Uh, I'm, I'm, we're going to do more of the roundtables. We're going to do more, um, you know, get a few people together and talk about a topic. Uh, we're also going to do some more, you know, kind of shooting the shit. I, I would like to do some more topical stuff, some more, uh, Hey, did you see in the news such and such happened, uh, you know, pertaining to mushrooms or psilocybin or whatever, and let's talk about it. So I would love to hear more feedback from you guys on, on what episodes you'd like to see. If you have somebody you'd like to see on the show, sh you know, let me know, get in my DMS, uh, just say, Hey. What do you think about this guy? Or have you ever heard of so-and-so? You know, let me know. Maybe I have. Maybe they don't want to talk to me. Maybe I don't want to talk to them. But you never know until you ask. So feel free to reach out. Let me know who you want to see. Um, I got a bunch of cool episodes coming up, guys. Uh, I had a little little rough patch over the holidays. Geeky was, was gone on a couple little family excursions here and there. Uh, we're getting back into the swing of things. You guys shouldn't can absolutely expect some phenomenal conversations in the next few months. And then as spring and summer approaches, you know, I'm, I got to get out there. I got to shake hands. I got to meet you guys. I got to make connections. I got to have conversations. Uh, and I got to get there side by side uh, out there in the woods or wherever we meet and uh, learn together. That is, you know, for me, I'm still learning so much uh, getting to do this. And that, that is for me a primary driver. Um, I love that my learning gets to be shared with all you guys as well. That's the fringe benefit for you. Uh, definitely makes me feel good to hear that you guys get something out of the show. So, so until next week, guys, go grow some mushrooms. Mm -hmm.